Good morning all. Today I'm going to power up uh, one or perhaps both of these ESP8266 and or ESP32 modules um, and try and make my first sort of uh, foray into the world of ESP IoT. And uh, to help me do this I drew this mind map where I searched uh, on Google but also in the comments of uh, one of my previous videos. It was the one where I received these two modules for all sorts of uh, ideas and suggestions of which route to take. And I came up with all this lot and I've chosen to go this route, Mongoose OS and Blink and anything else that is required to go down this route. If I don't like this route, I might change direction later on. Who knows? But uh, I'm going to start by trying to get Mongoose OS onto one of these boards. I might go the ESP32 um, initially because it's the more up to date, more powerful module. I've got a feeling um, that in here as it stands will be possibly the Espressive firmware or maybe the Lua firmware will be in here because this is uh, a Node MCU board. I don't actually know but I've got a feeling that when I put Mongoose OS in here it will overwrite what's in here currently so this will become Mongoose OS. I think that's how it works but uh, initially and I'm going to do it right now I'll pull the plug that's in my phone out that was charging my phone and plug it into here and see what happens. And a red light comes on and a flashing blue light and that's a good start. Let's take a look at the device manager. Now I heard a USB noise from my computer but what I'm really looking for in the device manager um, is a driver for this thing, the CP2102 which is the USB to serial uh, chip. So I just want to check that um, the CP2102 is visible in my device manager and that it's allocated a COM port. So let's do that. Right, so here's the device manager. Um, I seem to have a problem with a mouse or something, but uh, anyway, in ports, COM, and LPT, uh, we have a Silicon Labs CP210X USB to UART bridge, and that's on COM3. So certainly my PC can see that. Uh, CP2102 chip, so that's a good start, I guess. Right, so I suppose the next thing um, is to go to Mongoose OS and do this first step, download, download and start the Mongoose OS installer. Then I'll need to do a connect, so it's good that I've checked that um, that CP2102 is on COM3, because I'm sure I'll need that at some point. Uh, then flash and configure, flash the Mongoose OS to the module, Configure network and cloud access. That sounds a bit scary. And then code. Well, let's do it. Now, there's a button here that says watch video. Um, and I started to watch it, but it's being done on the Mac. So uh, I'm going to be doing it on Windows. And um, it looked like there was some sort of terminal emulator on the Mac. So I might have to have find a Windows alternative to that, but I don't know yet. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and download now. In fact, let's click that button right now and download the uh, Windows software. Right, okay, downloads, installation on Windows, download mozxe, so that's mongooseos.exe. Uh, for simple mongoose installations, double-click mozxe and follow the web UI wizard. I think I'll go the simple route. Ah, well, that looks pretty straightforward. That's uh, opened up a separate browser window um, at 127.001, which I think means this machine. Uh, port 1992. It already seems to have found the device on COM3. Uh, there is only one device on COM3, and now it's saying next. So let's hit next. Well, that was pretty straightforward. Aha, flash firmware, select firmware. Ah, okay, so we've got a list there, Mongoose OS, Downloads, uh, Moz ESP32 or 8266 or the CC3200, which is obviously something else. I'm going to go uh, ESP32 zip next. Uh, well, on my PC, there is a spinning wheel, which is not very encouraging. And the blue light on this device has gone out. So... Ah, that seems to have, ah, that's got to the next step. Right, I'll go back to the uh, screen capture. Right, well, I seem to be now on step three, configure Wi-Fi. 
So I need to type in my Wi-Fi name and my Wi-Fi password. Uh, I'll do that off camera, I think. Right, now on step four, it says connect to cloud. Choose cloud, and the options are MQTT server, and it's got uh, one test.mosquito, and I've heard of mosquito or mosquito, uh, org, I think that's open source, uh, on port 1883. The other option is AOS IoT. Now that's the Amazon Web Services thing. Well, I'm going to go for the first one, the MQTT server with this test mosquito org and just see what happens next. Um, well, that seemed incredibly easy. Uh, this is saying Mongoose OS is installed. Start prototyping. Uh, Moss Utility provides advanced functionalities like building firmware in C, working with device file system configuration. You can quit this wizard now and switch to the command line mode to continue with this option. Alternatively, continue using this simple web UI. Yeah, well, I certainly would prefer that to a command line thing. Uh, to prototype firmware functionality in JavaScript, click Start Prototyping button to, concede, to proceed with it. Righto, then, I will. And uh, this has appeared, and it's like a, a big IDE, a big sort of uh, development environment. Uh, what have we got? Device files, that appears to be what I'm looking at. Examples, configuration, uh, RPC API, terminal, and cloud dash. Uh, in the logs at the bottom, we've got ticks and tocks going up the screen. No idea what they are yet. There's a file here which appears to be written in JavaScript. Um, I can save it, save it, and reboot or share it. And there's a whole load of stuff up here, including an IP address, which it's presumably got from my router, because I am 192.168.1. It's picked up 126, which seems like uh, a valid IP address. Uh, it's, just, it's on COM3, so it's talking to the uh, Node MCU board. That's not showing anything very exciting at the moment. Um, let's just switch to examples, and we've got button blink. That one seems like a good place to start. Button blink JS, loaded button blink JS. Uh, what's that going to do? Click to replace devices in it JS with this example and reboot the device. Okay, I will. Let's see what happens. So we've got some stuff coming up in the logs here. Whole load of stuff looks like it's being sent over to my Node MCU thing, but nothing's actually happened yet. I'll wait until it does. Right, I think that's working. Um, it says here, print flash button is configured on GPIO pin. Press the flash button now. Well, it's not called flash on the ESP32, it's called boot. But if I press it right down the bottom here, you can see that it says uh, button press pin zero, LED pin 21, value one. Press it again and it says value zero, value one, value zero. So something's toggling, but nothing's actually happening on the Node MCU board. Possibly because the LED is not on pin 21. I don't actually know, but let's have a look at that board. Um, yeah, so here's my ESP32 board. There's the boot button. It said flash button in the example, but I think it's that. And if I press it, nothing happens. Although I'm watching that console on my PC and it's going 0, 1, 0. But it's not actually turning the LED on. So I think it's running, but there's something wrong with the LED's port number or pin number or something like that. Right, so I did a search for ESP built-in LED or something like that. And there's a comment here. There is no built-in LED on the ESP Room 32 module itself, uh, but it is defined in the hardware variants. From search, it looks like it's either pin 16 or pin 2 or pin 5. So do I need to put this thing on a breadboard and stick LEDs on those pins and just see which one turns on and off? I think I will. Right, so I've breadboarded. Um, now the console is saying LED pin is pin 21. 
and I've noticed there's a D21 there, so I've put an LED on that pin, um, cathode to, well, to that ground rail, and that back to ground through a 510 ohm resistor, because it's all I could find. And now if I press boot, yay! The LED toggles, uh, the console is saying value one, value zero. Yes, it's toggling each time I press the, um, the boot button or the flash button. It works! So, um, yes, I mean, it's a very trivial example, um, but it works. Now, the way, where I got the LED pin 21 was down here. It says button press, pin equals zero. So I presume that's GPIO zero that the button is connected to, LED pin 21, value zero, value one. If I press that button now, you can see that's changed to value one, value zero, value one, and the LED comes on value zero. So trivial example, but it does work. And uh, on the device itself, press the button, the LED comes on, press it, it goes off. So it's toggling on and off. Now I've got lots of questions. Is this going out over the uh, USB or is it going over Wi-Fi? I honestly don't know. I could, f I could find out, I guess, by just putting five volts on there uh, through a little power bank. Maybe I'll do that. Um, so I've unplugged this device uh, from my PC and I've put it on a power bank. That still seems to be doing the toggling. So the program is still in here and running, but the console seems to have completely lost contact with this unit. So on the console, it says up here, type device address and there's a red dot. And down here it says the system cannot find the file specified. I tried. Let's clear the console and try rebooting the device. Uh, I've got a spinning wheel up here. Ah, and it says server error, reason, lost connection with your board. So I presume that it was uh, the console was talking to the board through the serial port, through USB, and not through Wi Fi. Uh, so, have I learned something? Well, yeah, I think I probably have. And uh, plugging this device back into my PC, everything's back working again. The console is now reporting that I'm pressing this button. Uh, this thing's still running fine, of course. But what I want to do next is get at least back to where I got when I did the ESP8266 some time ago, where I had a web-enabled LED. So this thing would be powered standalone from a power bank and from the web. I could remotely control this LED, turn it on and off. And I think I want to do that from the Blink app. So rather than just from a web browser, actually do it from an app running on phone or tablet. But I'm quite happy that I've got this far today. I think uh, this, this was very much a me finding my way kind of video, trying to muddle through. I think when I get to doing uh, the Blink app and remotely turning the, the LED on and off, I'll do it more as a tutorial, so I'll learn it and plan it ahead of time. But certainly I do like this Mongoose OS. It does seem to be simple to install, uh, simple to run the the uh, simple trivial examples. They seem to work. Yeah, so far so good. Cheerio.